All right, we're uh, back on the 2009 No Fluff Just Stuff tour with uh, Ted Neward today. And Ted, we want to uh, speak briefly about uh, collections and their significance and what people need to know more about it. Notice the emphasis there on briefly. I know. Um, so the biggest thing is just the collections library in some respects is both the most widely known and the least widely known library of the libraries that job developers use. In the sense that it's most widely known because everybody uses it. I mean, in many respects, everybody just considers this to be kind of the, the, you know, the dynamic array. When an array doesn't work, I reach for an array list, or when I want keys and values, I reach for a hash map. And really, that's where most people's knowledge stops. Mm -hmm. By far and away, you know, the, the curve drops off significantly after that point. Some people have played around with a couple other classes. Some people have played around with maybe one or two other implementations. Maybe they're using linked list instead of array list. But the collections library itself is really large. It's huge. It doubled in size once Java 5 shipped because we got a number of concurrency-friendly collection implementations. So I'll give you an example. The copy on write array list implementation is it's a list. It's a list of TE implementation. But the important thing is the, when, when I create a copy on write array list around, for example, another collection, they both share the same storage, so mm -hmm. there's no actual copying made until I modify one of those two, at which point the copy is made. So now they become two separate implementations. And so this is really useful for scenarios where I want to have multiple copies, if you will, of the same guts, but most people are interacting with it in a read-mostly fashion. So it minimizes the amount of copying that needs to happen until the point at which you do modify it, and just silently under the hood, the copy's made. And it's not something that you as a developer have to struggle with. This is, again, coming out of Java Util Concurrent. There's a number of these different implementations that are there. There's a number of, of some of the interfaces, in some cases, interfaces that are missing that should be there that really you could write yourself. And so really, the, the, the Collections API represents one of those libraries that if you haven't recently, gone back to look and see what's there. Maybe you looked at it back in the 1.2, 1.3 time frame. A lot has changed and there's a lot of new stuff that it's well worth the Java developer's time to go back, read the Java docs, look at the implementations, and just you know figure out for yourself when exactly do I want to use a array or a concurrent skip list array set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Very good. So the other challenge we have on tour that we cover internals uh, quite a bit, and, and Java internals is kind of like this black magic that uh, people need to have a better mastery of. And so I know some of your more popular talks are like uh, centered around class loaders. Yeah. Why don't you uh, talk once again uh, regarding class loaders and what people really need to know? Well, the, the key thing is just the fact that, that class loaders are such a core part of the enterprise Java story. I mean, if you're, if you're working in an app server, if you're working in Tomcat, if you're working in Spring, I mean, lightweight, heavyweight, regardless, class loaders are playing a fundamental part in how the container is interacting with your code, providing some, some isolation guarantees so that, for example, inside of Tomcat, if I have a web app here and another web app here, that if, they, if we have two classes with exactly the same name, somehow they don't conflict or in some cases, how do I deploy this web application or how do I modify this JSP without having to take the server down and bring it back up again? Mm -hmm. And there are some interesting implications around the use of class loaders as this backbone for the, 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 the app server space that they do bubble up. I mean, it's hard to see them sometimes, but they do bubble up and they do bite Java programmers very squarely on the hindquarters. It's a very sensitive spot when mm -hmm. it does. Because all of a sudden you get a class cast exception where it says person cannot be cast to person. And you're left thinking either A, I'm stupid, or B, son is stupid because they can't get a stupid cast to work. And really it's not either of those situations. What's happening here is very real and reasonable. You just have to understand what I call the five laws of class loaders to see why these things are occurring. And, and when they do occur, you can then say, oh, okay, I understand why, and here's how I'm going to solve the particular problem. Class loaders in particular, that one subject, 
um, is the one subject it seems more than any other, even more than concurrency and some of these other things, that seems to separate the men from the boys or the women from the girls, as the case may be, in the Java space. If you know class loaders, you really seem to have achieved this, this state of Java guru mm -hmm. And if you don't know class loaders, well, you kind of have to like open doors and wash the cars of the people who do. So in that sense, it just there's, there's so many core fundamental bits about the app server that are critical, uh, that you need to understand class loaders. Even if you're doing OSGI, if you're doing MAVE and doing any of that other stuff, even in the face of Jigsaw and, and the, the modules and so forth, all of these are still going to cluster very tightly around the class loader story in Java. You really kind of need to know it if you're going to be doing anything real for any length of time, particularly if you're trying to you know, maintain software that's running in production. Exactly. Well, it's a foundational component. Yep. You're only as strong as your foundation. Yep. Right? So good point. Well, thanks for the time, Ted. You can uh, see Ted Moore on the 2009 No Fluff Just Stuff tour at a city near you. Take care.